Hello. Hey guys, welcome to the live stream. Uh, yeah, it's not it's not really five p.m. yet, but I think we can already start. Um, yeah, welcome to um, my production walkthrough of Afterglow. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to show you today a little bit of um, yeah the production process, um, the arrangement. Um, the mixing and yeah I think um, first of all we can um, yeah listen to the song and then I can tell you a little bit about it Yeah, that's the song. Um, I tried to answer also a few questions on the go. So where do I get my vocals from? I get my vocals uh, from sessions. I do lots of songwriting sessions um, and I also get um, uh, demos sent from vocalists or I uh, send an instrumental to a vocalist and they record something on it. So it's like always a little different. Um, yeah. So um, first thing I wanted to talk about is um, the track itself and the arrangement. So I will 
um, make this a little smaller here so you can like kind of visually see what is happening and what is repeating um, because so here at the top I have um, I have structured the tracks uh, the track into several parts um, and first with the intro and in the intro I already have uh, the chorus um, so uh, I did this because I I think it's cool to realize the song right after the first uh, few seconds and um, yeah I, f I filtered it a little bit out so it's not I filtered some frequencies out so that it's not exactly what is in the chorus um, um, and yeah uh, we, we can listen to the intro first what's happening here Yeah, so you you hear the chorus for the first time, and I have um, some uh, melody, some uh, piano melodies uh, inside, and then we go straight into the verse, um, and then into the drop, um, and so this is so those are the next two parts, big parts, and um, in the drop we also have of course the the chorus vocal, so. Um, this is like almost like the first repetition of that vocal hook. Um, and yeah, we can listen to the verse and the drop uh, again, like, uh, wait. And the cards are full, at the main to fall. Mm -hmm. And you are so high, you can see it all. So this is the first time you hear the uh, a verse and the drop and then we go into a C part which has like um, which is like a part that is not there before in the track so it's kind of refreshing um, yes it's refreshing for the listener and then we go into um, some kind of a bridge uh, I marked it here as a verse but it's not really a verse it's just um, yeah just basically some ad-libs I would say um, and yeah and then we go back into the drop um, again to have this nice uh, repetition and here in the verse uh, it's also very uh, the most important part and um, is this thing here it's called this glide and it's also a very prominent sound um, yeah and then later on in the drop um, it gets repeated again so there are always things that are how to that are mirrored um, and always new elements coming in so it's like not exactly the same thing over and over it's, it's not always the ex exact same thing but it's like similar um, but always different and this is I would say um, something that I tend to do very often uh, when I arrange tracks and yeah we can listen to that um, here in the verse um, okay I will yeah just let me figure that out Hopefully that's better now with the face. 
Um, yeah, so let's listen to the verse and the drop. Yeah, and so you probably heard that this uh, melody um, got repeated here in the second part of the drop. And um, of course, there are also always new elements coming in here in the drums, for example. Lots of hi-hats are here as well that are not in the first drop, so that the second drop is a little bigger. Also, the snare has way more layers. Um, um, yeah, I think a few more pads are coming in as well. Um, and yeah, I think also very prominent is like this drum fill here, which is not in the first drop. So this makes it a little different. Yeah, this is how it sounds. Yeah, um, and at the end, there is an outro. So I always like try to have an intro and an outro because I feel like it's like a nice way to uh, lead into the song and a nice ending so it's like just a little more fun to listen to I think um, and yeah um, I think let's start uh, with the vocals and I can show you what I did there um, I didn't do a ton of processing on it to be honest because um, it got sent to me already in a very uh, nice way. I only did a bit of compression and EQing, but nothing uh, like really life changing. I had I always um, really like to use this SSL uh, channel to um, do a few tweaks on on things because uh, it's it's a bit bit of a limitation as well, and you don't have like you know and and you have like an EQ inside of it and a, and a compressor and you can do already quite a few things there. And um, I don't know, I think when it comes to mixing, you also want to maybe like obviously use different compressors as well. But I think just to make the right decision and, and you know, to when, when I think about, okay, does this vocal need more compression or do I want to cut a frequency out? Um, I can really focus on that and not on, you know, do I want to use like one of the 20 compressors that I own and it's just um, it makes things a bit easier and um, so this is on the verse um, there's like there's this part here at the end where it's just a yeah where it's just a crystallizer it's a nice echo yeah I, I I add those things in to just to make the parts a little different. Um, um, and yeah. Okay, what would you, 
be your advice to someone who wants to produce similar type of music but has no knowledge of how to or has ever played any instruments? Um, I would say, um, yeah, try to um, learn a little bit about music theory. Um, and that's already a huge bonus. And then I think when it comes to production, it really is the experience that makes um, like great tracks because um, I think, um, yeah, I, I, I think every producer started with uh, songs that probably didn't sound so well. And it, it's just the way, uh, it's just a path that you need to go. It's like always the more time you put into it, like the better you get at it. So yeah, this is what I would say. I think le learning with music, music theory is what I would say is a good, good uh, start. And, and then uh, there's also a ton of information out there. You can, um, there are many books and also some great YouTube channels that explain uh, lots of stuff. And yeah, so that would be my advice. Yeah. Um, then we have uh, here like uh, in, another crystallizer layer from that I created. Sounds like this. That one comes in after the the first verse and it's like a nice ending. It's like just a funny, funny no noise. And uh, yeah, all I did here is also some EQing and compression and um, I use the crystallizer um, and this plugin makes the funny noise. Um, yeah, he, the, the, this is the, the, the second uh, verse with the ad libs and the Yeah, and yeah, and, and that is uh, the the sound that makes it. Um, yeah, uh, it, it it has just some EQing and compression as always, and a and a nice reverb on it. Um, here in the chorus as well. Uh, it's only I I only do compression and EQing mostly, and I have all my reverbs as a send. So for example, here I have a shimmer reverb, um, like a hull, uh, a plate and a room. Um, so, so, and I, uh, send my, my chain, my channels to those, um, 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 yeah, sends and yeah. So, and I think here are a few more, um, here are a few more um, like uh, vocal cuts and pieces, you know, um, that are also a little bit distorted uh, sometimes. For example, that one here, I think. Yeah, those are just layers that, that um, give a nice vibe and, you know, change the impression of the track. Um, to the first drop and yeah, yeah. A few more. Um, yes, I work full time as a musician. Yes, this is a re uh, this is a released song. It's out on Anjuna Deep since last week, um, so it's 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 new, uh, but it is released. Um, it's it's called Afterglow. Um, it's it's called Afterglow. And yeah, then let's move on to the the music group. Uh, this is how I call it. And I have like always uh, one uh, main uh, lead sound. And this is here in the main th uh, synth group. And here are also a couple of layers. And it's basically this this progressive melody that is like going through the whole track. I don't know, it's that one. Yeah, and um, that's like the main sound of the song. And so this is um, probably, yeah, yeah. And, and here as well, just some, I did a low cut, um, some EQing and compression, whatever 
sounds good to me. I mean, they have like some points but I always uh, stick to, you know, for example, if, if a sound is a bit too muddy that you can like cut out between 300 and 400 Hertz. And yeah, and here's like something to um, decrease the stereo with. Um, yeah, I layer this with the Prophet um, and he, and this is like, and for example, this here, the delay up at the beginning, um, um, I, uh, just, uh, I, I had this one here. Yeah. Yeah, this is a sound from a really cool uh, sample library from Olaf Annals, uh, one of my favorite uh, musicians. And um, yeah, I he did a collaboration with uh, Spitfire, and I use a lot of uh, sample libraries from Spitfire. Most, uh, some of them are also free. For example, um, um, for example, this piano that I'm using here is like a free free VST. Yeah. So um, yeah, and then I also layered the 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 diva sound um, with a piano, which sounds like this, and it's it, it's just I, I layer a lot of uh, instruments so that the combination has like this kind of uh, yeah beautiful vibe. I don't know I don't really know how to how to say it, but. Uh, Yeah, I think it just adds lots of um, 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 you, I think it just adds lots of depth to it, and um, yeah. So to to create this atmosphere, I I really like to use the Spitfire sounds, and I also, um, for example, use lots of um, um, effects like field recordings. Um, here's some ambience that are like uh, below the track. I know you won't hear it. Yeah. Ah, yeah. This is what you hear. Yeah. And and also, yeah. Here's like another foley, some wind ambience. Yeah. Um. So this is what I really like to do. Um. And yeah. Obviously, I also use like fills and uh, crashes and rises just to give it more momentum. Um here um it's like a really helpful thing and gives always a little more power um yeah and when we, when we talk about the drums i really like to have a like a drum compressor for example here i use the fairchild um it's a really nice compressor from universal audio and the drum i also send the drum group to um this compressor as a send and i use it as a parallel uh, compressor and um, yeah, it just glues the whole drum group together and uh, makes it a little punchier. Um, this is what I can recommend. Um, I do this in, ev yeah, in every song. Um, and what I also do is, uh, I, I think somebody also asked about um, how I mix the kick and the bass. Uh, I, I really like to also send my kick and my bass line to a separate return channel and compress them and then mix it together with the original um, source. And I, I really like to use the SSL G bus here. And um, yeah, we can like see what it does. It doesn't do a lot, you know, it's just like really, um, yeah, it's basically um, only like kissing the needle, that's what you call it. Um, and yeah, so uh, this is how I, how I, um, was a part of how I mix uh, my, my, uh, my kick. I, I, I really like to use um, the Kick2 plugin um, for, uh, from uh, Sonic Academy. And I also always uh, tune my kick drum. Um, and I also um, like um, zinc my kick drum to the time. For example, this song here is in 100, uh, uh, in 114 BPM and like an eighth note is like, I always try to make it like around an eighth note exactly. And it's like somewhere there. 
um, I think 120 BPM is exactly like, f then it's always like around like 500 milliseconds. And you can also, uh, there's, there are also websites online where you can um, Google that. And yeah, um, there's, there's another um, ghost, this, this is called a uh, ghost kick drum channel. This is basically the same kick drum that plays in the song and it's just muted. But for example, um, for example, here in the bass group, um, I have a side chain to the ghost channel. And that means, um, that, and the, the reason why I do it is that, for example, here, the main kick drum stops playing, but the ghost kick drum still keeps playing. So when the kick drum, um, uh, like is not playing, uh, the bass still gets stuck and you have this sidechain effect without, you know, the kick. And this is, uh, especially here in the drop parts is really helpful because if I wouldn't do it, the whole part would get like louder and then you have, it, it, and it sounds really weird uh, when you take out the kick drum <laughs> and the whole track gets like 3 dB louder and then it goes like 3 dB quieter. So uh, yeah, this is why I always do it. It's just, uh, then you can like t take out the kick drum here with no, no issues. And as well, um, I also layered another kick on top of it. It's just the top kick here. Um, I made, I made it quite short um, and I think I also, yeah, I filled it out the low end. Um, did a bit more EQing here on the SSL channel, like, um, yeah, I filled it some, something out, like put some more air into it. Um, and yeah, uh, this is what I do uh, for that. Um, yeah, how do I start um, my tracks? Um, with this track, I got sent the, uh, vo the vocal um, so it was a demo that I got and um, first of all I try to realize what the harm harmonic foundation is so for example in which key the song is and then I try to find the root notes um, in the bass line for example here in the root notes uh, here, here the I don't know for example here you see it's like first on an F then on a D sharp uh, B fl uh, on a B flat and a C sharp. And this is, a, and then I know, okay, so it either has to be, so, and then I can build the chords on top of that. And this is like the, the harmonic foundation that I first always need, need to have. And then I can, you know, play around with, you know, what could be a nice um, lead melody for the song or what layers uh, does the song need? How much ambience is, how much fragile sounds does it need to make it great? And and then like the further I go, the more I like, you know, try to like um, make it uh, that, try to carve out the potential, yeah, of it, so to say. Um, but but it, it's always the harmonic foundation. And then the next part is uh, I try to, like build the structure for the song. I know, okay, for example, the verse uh, here with the vocal um, could be a nice break. And when the chorus hits, um, I will. I want to put in the drums and the bass. And I mean, I, I could also do it the other way around, And but this is how I structured. I think also the arrangement was a little uh, different from the vocals. So it, it was not entirely so I, I, I did I did actually a quite a big tweak and that was I think I only got the verse and I got the chorus and this uh, this sound here in the second verse was just somehow I think it was just an uh, yeah it was just a layer and I made like a bridge out of it and copied the the verse um, to the second drop. So this was something that I did in, in, in this uh, song and also the intro part was not there. Uh, I edited this and also all these uh, little, um, all these little uh, layers here with, uh, that are filtered and like have delays uh, on, on them. Those are also like cut it out by me and then I placed them there. So I, I also did, did a lot on the vocal, but um, yeah, so uh, I, I, I was also involved with the songwriting on the chorus. So like the repetitive melody was like not there in, in the beginning. And then I 
uh, went on a Zoom session with Griff Clausen. This is the singer of the song. And I, f I felt like, yeah, and I'd ask, what can we do? And, you know, I think at the beginning it was just, um, I, I think the, the song just ended basically here when he says stuck in the afterglow and that, and the whole part here, um, where he always repeats afterglow, afterglow, uh, that was not there. And we, um, came up with that idea in, in a songwriting session. And I think that was, that was really the moment where, um, yeah, I got excited about it because it was working. And before that it was also nice, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's way better now. Um, yeah. Are there a few more questions? As a new artist, how would you recommend finding vocalists for your tracks and best way to approach? Um, my advice would be just uh, reach out to people that you like um, and always be nice. I think it's like always best to hit them officially and not on, on Instagram uh, because they won't probably won't even read the message. Um, so I would always even if they have a management and there's just a management address, I would just write them a nice email and be like, and, you know, introduce yourself, um, what you're doing. Ideally, you can even send a few instrumentals with, uh, your email and yeah. And then, um, wait for the reply. And, and I would just make, make a playlist of your art, of your artists that you want to reach out. I mean, I don't know when you're starting out, probably you one won't like, uh, you, I don't know, you probably don't want to ask like, you know, like one of the biggest singers in the world, you know, so it, it has to be like, I don't know, I think it has to be within reach always. I mean, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would just make a Spotify playlist and hit the managers up and let's see what happens. <laughs> so, um, and, and if you know um, uh, friends uh, that do music and that, uh, sing and do songwriting that's obviously a big bonus because then you already know somebody who um, yeah can sing on your song but I, I think I wouldn't focus on that only I think it's always it's definitely fine to to reach out to people yeah do you sidechain the music to the vocals no um, uh, no I, I do sidechain basically everything <laughs> but not the vocals um, I think not in the car. Oh, oh, well, I do it. I, I do it. I, I did it here, but it's, it's really rarely. I, 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 it depends on, on, uh, yeah, on, on how it works, but, uh, yeah, here, here I did it. Yes. And yes, I will come to London. Um, but yeah, I will announce it soon. Um, yeah. So I can uh, go on a little bit with the track. Um, yeah, this the snare group uh, here. Um, we have the snare in the first drop, which sounds like this. Yeah, and we have the tom groove. And in the second drop, um, there are more layers in the uh, there are more layers in the snare group. The tom has more layers and the clap has also more layers and it's just more energetic, more full. And um, yeah, this is how it sounds here. And also the rhythm gets, um, also the rhythm evolves because um, we have this clap here. Um, that is like a really nice accent to the groove. Um, so, you know, so the parts are basically mirroring a little bit, but are also at the same time, totally different. And this is what I uh, can always uh, recommend you to like structure it and, you know, and then we have a clap here in the verse that also gets filtered in. Yeah, I don't know if you hear that. Yeah. Yeah, and then it has a really nice sound. I think it's I well I warped it a little bit, um, and I think it's it's uh, really nice to add those uh, sounds in that are a little glitchy because they I don't know I think they they just sound great, 
and adds so much vibe to you to um the song so yeah um so this is what happens here um in in the and and also um uh, when when i layer um something um i think yeah i think here so for example for example you have a noise layer something that's a little more um has a little harder attack i don't really know what heat means we will find that out yeah it's just punchy so so i always try to layer different elements to a snare for example when some well, when i have a snare that has lots of noise i probably wouldn't add another um snare layer that has a ton of noise i would just maybe look for a snare that has a, a really nice attack or a really nice bottom or it's like punchy and uh so I always try to really achieve something with each layer and um not just layer um uh, like claps together just because you feel like you need to to layer something you know um yeah how do you get most of your drum samples? Do you play them, make them with white noise synth sample packs? Uh, I have a sample pack uh, that I uh, re released with uh, Production Music Live, I think last year or so, or I don't know. And it was uh, for my last album. Um, so I actually use sometimes um, still sounds from, from the sample pack. For example, this clap here from Once in a Blue Moon is in so many tracks. Also, it's a shaker from wherever you are. Uh, and also I've Diva, I made Diva presets for the sample pack, which I also uh, really use a lot. Um, I use Splice uh, also to find samples and uh, sample packs from, from friends um, that get sent. So, you know, sometimes, you know, like just friends of mine recommend me sample packs and uh, send them over. Um, but yeah, I think it's like, it's a combination of that, of, of this. And for example, um, yeah, the, f when it comes to uh, white noise, um, I made some um, crashes with the MS-20, um, you know, and it's just the white noise here, and I make it quieter, I make quieter, and I uh, filter it out, I filter some frequencies out here, and also put... Um, Get, and also um, put some panning on it and some um, delays, for example, here. Yeah, and then it sounds, I don't know, I think we can like try to take all of it off and then we can see how it sounds at the end. Yeah, that's just a rough layer from the, um, uh, the, the rough noise from the MS-20 and this is how it sounds. Yeah, so I, I, I do that a lot. And I think here as well, here's like a different pan, a different auto pan, a different filter. And, but it's, I think it's basically the same source. Um, I don't know, I think here's also, I think here's a different noise layer. Um, and I just like, yeah, then I only put some uh, Echo Boy on it. Oh, well, it's not even active. So maybe it's like, I decide not to put the Echo on it, but, um, yeah, that is uh, that. That is what I do when I um, record uh, uh, like rises and crashes. I also use samples from Splice or like from my sample libraries. Um, for example, like a white noise riser. I think that's also. I mean, it's basically a, a noise, and you just turn up the volume. So it's like not. I, I don't know. It's like not. Yeah. Um, it's 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 not really like i don't know i think it's like not really rocket science but um yeah i think it's always good to to not just put like a sample in but always you know try to uh, like filter it or put some delay or some auto pan and um yeah this is what i would recommend what type of sounds do you consider most important for the style of music you make uh oh that's a nice question um i really like the diva very important um use it in many songs i also use the serum uh 
um, synthesizer a lot. For example, the organ sound here, this is a sound that is in basically every song that I do. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually, I think the first time I used it was in, in breathing. Um, and yeah, that, so I, I use it in, in every song because it's, I don't know, it, 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 it's, it's like a, it's like a sound that I always need and it's not really prominent all the time. So you don't really hear it, but you probably feel it. I think it kind of, I think stuff like that glues really, especially, um, like al albums together and um yeah and another thing that i really like to use is the um um are um some contact libraries for example the Olaf for annals uh, library from spitfire i use that one a lot um yeah for example here this delay synthesizer here or all the violins at the end um yeah i think I think that one's probably from Olaf for Arnolds. Yeah, it's the Evolutions pack. Yeah, it sounds like this. I use these a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're insanely beautiful. It's like, I think the whole Olaf for Arnolds pack is really, really amazing. I totally love it. And um, also, I I use a lot the um the Unicorder um from Nils Fram. Um I'm just trying so let's see where it is. Um I think where is it? Here. Yeah. Oh well, it's it's actually not the Olaf for Arnolds. It's uh, the um, it, it, it's it's the, the Olaf for Arnolds piano, Falk Grand piano. But I use the Unicorda, bait also really often. So um, yeah, I think those would probably be the um, yeah. You have so many pad layers. How do you mix them without having mud with your bass? Um, EQing. It's really EQing and volume. Um, I think the, the pad layers are really quiet uh, sometimes. So it's like a thing that you more f that, that, that you feel a little more than you actually hear them. And so this is one way to, to keep the mud away. Um, and yeah, just volume and a cueing. Um, and I, I I think that there are also some pad layers that you want to hear, for example, like these strings from Wolof or Arnolds. But um, yeah, I think when it comes here to the, I don't know, like the pad here probably is, okay. Yeah, that one's like really, really uh, loud, but maybe that one's a bit, okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I think some, some of them are, 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 are really quiet, but I also structure them, you know, for example, uh, with, with, with for, for example, one pad plays at a lower octave, one plays at a higher octave. And also the bass is, for example, in this song, you basically only have sub bass. So you don't have so much frequency information from the bass in the lower mids. Um, and that's why it's not really a huge problem um, here. Uh, and also lots of low frequency, uh, um, low mid frequency information comes from the organ sound here. And yeah, I think this is, this is probably the way how I structure my pads. And then I also have um, like the violins or, or like the, the, the Spitfire Labs pads that are more in the high frequency area. And so, and then I stack it I, I stack them up on each other and all, and then I think it, yeah, I think it, uh, like, yeah, yeah, between one to five kilohertz, I have this, uh, pad, at uh, uh, this diva, um, melody and, you know, well, and you can also like turn the filter up there and add some noise to really, 
uh, fill out the whole frequency spectrum and make a track more energetic. And that's uh, also something I do a lot. So I think when it comes to all these pads and melodies, you really have to stack them up on each other. And um, I know, and there's also, there are also things, you know, sometimes you just don't have the room for another melody uh, instrument. And yeah, then you have to have to throw it out. I don't know. I think when when a track gets too full, um, yeah, you have to reduce it. Uh, but I think here it's 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 like a fine. I think here it's pretty fine. I think I wouldn't like take any and any pad out here. Um, so, yeah. Um, can I ask you how you approach mastering? Do you have people you work with that take that on? Yes, uh, I work. Um, with a mastering engineer um, and he does that for me. So um, yeah, uh, I, I don't do that myself. I I, I have this uh, limiter here. Um, that's just a basic setting um, that works in most cases. Um, it does it, it does only like two, two decibels of gain reduction, I think, and um, yeah, it's like a pretty standard thing if you just want to make something loud and play it out. You know, this is uh, like a go-to thing for me. And also, uh, when it comes to gain staging, I use the Voxango Span a lot because then you can really see like, you know, where each element uh, sits and um, how loud it is, for example. Um, yeah, with this, I don't know, for example, the vocal. Let's see, like where the frequencies are. You know, for example, here in the low end, you have like no frequency information. This is where the bass is and the kick drum hits. So, you know, and, and, and you know where it peaks and it's like a nice orientation for me and it's super helpful. Um, um, yeah. Let me know if there are any further questions on it. I think uh, that was pretty much pretty much it. I think I can let me know if there's anything else that you want to want to um, know. But I feel like there that's probably that's probably it. Yeah. I think we can like listen to this song one more time and yeah, maybe you can like, uh, so we can like see how it, how it sounds all together.
okay thank you guys uh that was fun um hope you enjoyed this and yeah see you soon the song is out since uh last week and the song and the whole album will be released on the 2nd of september um really looking forward and yeah bye bye